you know, they, we're going to preach all day long against men having long hair, right? right? But they don't preach against women having short hair. So what's with the double standard? And that double standard is applied a lot. A lot of times you'll, you know, you'll definitely hear them say, don't, don't put a skirt on a man. But then they'll, they won't say, don't put a pant, pants on a woman, you know. Or they'll say, don't you dare have long hair, man. You know, don't be a long-haired sissy, you know, long-haired hippie. But then all of a sudden with the women, it's like they can have their hair as short as they want without anybody preaching it. Now, I'm, look, if you come in here, men, and you, we've had men come in here with hair all the way down their back. And, you know, I'm not going to tell them what to do. I'm not, I mean, I'm going to preach the Bible. But I'm not going to badger them or harass them, and I'm not going to badger any woman that has short hair. But I'm going to stand by the pulpit and preach what the Bible says, that women are supposed to have long hair and, th and that men are not. That is what the Bible teaches, and I'm going to preach it. And, you know, my pastor back in Sacramento, he taught me a good principle a long time ago. He said this. He said, I never base what I preach on who's in the audience. And, and here's what he said. He said, not, I never subtract anything, but he said, I also don't add anything. And I think that's a smart principle. I think that's a good principle. So, for example, if I come to church with the sermon notes, right, like tonight's sermon, all about men having long hair. Let's say a guy walked in, and we don't have one here tonight, but let's say a guy walked in with really long hair tonight, and I said, oh, man, I better change my sermon. What does that make me? A compromiser, a, a, a hypocrite, a phony. And here's the thing. If, if we happen to have a visitor walk in that had long hair and this is my sermon, you know what my first reaction would be? Well, man, God, praise the Lord. God brought this guy on the perfect night because this is exactly what he needs to hear. But you know what? These spineless preachers would just look, oh, man, I don't want to offend him. We don't want to hurt his feelings. No, let's tell him the truth. Now, do it in love. Do it kindly. You know, so if I, but here's the thing. If I have a sermon about something else and a guy walks in with long hair, I'm not going to add it to my sermon either. Oh, well, you know, no, just thought of another point, <laughs> you know? No, you shouldn't add it or subtract. You know, just write your sermon and just preach it regardless, whether it's about clothing. And look, I've preached sermons about clothing and, and people are guilty of the exact things I'm bringing up. And you say, that is so rude, that is so insensitive. But here's the thing, as the church gets big, there's probably always going to be somebody there guilty. There's always going to be a guy with long hair. You know, there's always going to be some. And, and so you can't censor your preaching like that. You shouldn't add it and you shouldn't take it away. And you know what I've often done when I had a situation like that? Let's say a guy walked, and I've, I've preached this type of a sermon all about long hair and had a guy walk in with long hair. And I preached the sermon. So I'm not just, I'm not just blowing smoke up here. I've done it. I've lived it. I've been there. And let me tell you what I would do is after the service, I immediately make a beeline to that guy. And you think I apologize for the truth? No. But you know what I do, though? I'm very nice to him and just show him, hey, I, that I love him and that I'm not. I don't say anything about the sermon because I'm not going to apologize for the truth. I never will. But I just go up to him, man, it's so good to have you here tonight. You know, thanks for being here. God bless you. What's your name? What do you do for a living? You know, and, and I'm right away going to show this guy, hey, man, this isn't personal. This is just the Bible being preached, you know? And, you know, a lot of times that same guy will come back with a, with a haircut the next week. Because, you know, people, some people have just never even heard this. Some people are like, well, Jesus had long hair. If I'm going to be Christ-like, I'm going to grow my hair nice and long like Jesus. Of course, Jesus didn't have long hair. There's nothing in the Bible that even comes close to teaching that he did. You got that from a painting or a picture, you know, painted about 1,500 years after Jesus Christ walked on this earth. Okay, and so we need to understand that just as wrong as it is for a man to have long hair, it is also wrong for a woman not to have long hair. Now, the, the question inevitably comes up, and uh, they'll say this, well, what's long? Or the other question comes up, well, what's short? Now, let's say God gave us an exact measurement. Okay, let's just pretend for a second. Let's just pretend that God gave us an exact measurement. And let's say that measurement was, you know, 10 inches. You know, I'm just picking a random round number. Let's say God said, you know what, 10 inches is long hair. You say, well, that would have been easier, Pastor Anderson, because then we'd know where he draws the line, 10 inches. But let me tell you why God did not say 10 inches. Because if God said 10 inches, you know what that would mean? That would mean that I could have my hair 9 and 3 quarter inches, and my wife could have her hair 10 and a quarter inches and we'd both be in compliance, would we not? Hers is 10 and a quarter, she's in the long range. Mine's 9 and 3 quarter, 
I'm in the short range. And you know what? Would there really be a discernible difference in our hair? Could you really notice that half inch difference? No. So what would that mean? Men and women would be having the same hair. So here's how I interpret this. That there are basically three kinds of hair. This is my opinion. There's long hair, right? That's just clearly long hair. No question about it. Then there's short hair, which is clearly short hair. No question about it. And then there is in between hair where we wonder about it. Okay. So my, my, my belief is this. Men should have short hair, women should have long hair, and we should both stay away from in-between hair. I mean, doesn't that make sense? Just to avoid confusion. Because if we're in the in-between zone, we're going to start looking like each other. We're going to start having similar hairdos. And I want there to be a distinct difference. So my, here's my thing. You know, when I think about my wife's hair, it's just like, well, how long can we go with it? You know? Before it gets too many split ends and she's telling me she has to get it trimmed. I like it to be as long as possible. And I'm like, yeah, grow it longer, longer, longer. You know, but then she's like, I got to get it trimmed, the split ends or what, you know. And so different, now some ladies can grow it down to their ankles. I think that's cool. You know, some ladies grow it down to their waist. You know, some ladies grow it halfway down their back. Some it grows to the shoulder and the ends start to split. Some of it has to do, it, it, it seems like, uh, some, and I'm not an expert on hair, but it seems like sometimes darker hair is usually more robust and it usually can grow longer. Sometimes lighter hair seems a little thinner, doesn't really grow as long. Because whenever I'm out and about and I see women with super long hair, it seems like it's usually darker in color. But there's just a difference. So obviously there are different lengths of hair. But you know what? You know, when, when, when ladies have their hair long, I'm not saying it has to be down to their ankles. I'm not saying that they have to pick it up when they walk so that they don't trip over it. I'm not saying that it has to go to their waist or even halfway down their back. I'm not even giving any indication because the Bible is not giving an indication. I just think people should just look at it and just consider it, that's long hair. And I think women should wear their hair in such a way that if a man had it, we'd be like, that guy has long hair. Does everybody understand? All women should have their hair in a way where if we looked at a man with that exact hairdo, we would look at that and say, man, that guy's got long hair. See what I'm saying? Because there should just be a difference, okay? So I'm not trying to see how long I can grow my hair to just be right there on that borderline. You know, I'm, I want to have a, a haircut. And look, I do not think that all men need to have a haircut like mine. I think you could have several inches more than this, okay? I, I, I do not, I'm not saying everybody needs a buzz cut. I mean, but, but look, like, for example, look at Alvin's hair. Alvin's got a lot more hair on his head than I do. But would anybody make the argument that Alvin has long hair? No. no. So you see what I'm saying? And so, and so what I'm saying is it should just be uh, your hair's not long, you know? And you say, what does that mean? Well, if you can't figure that out, how are you going to understand the rest of the Bible? If you can't figure out what the word long means and you can't figure out what the word short means, how are you going to find out? How are you going to figure out what the word propitiation means? You know, you need, to, you need to get some smarts, man. That's all I could say to that. And, you know, that's all we have time for tonight. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this passage, dear God. And, and I pray that you would help us to take these things to heart and realize that, you know what? It's the inside that matters the most, but the outside also matters. Help us to get our inside and outside right. Help us not to fall into this uh, society that we live in where... There's no difference between men and women. They have the same authority. They live the same lifestyle. They have the same hair, same clothes. Help us not to be deceived, Lord. Help us to stand strong for, for distinction between men and women in hair, in clothing, in lifestyle, in authority. And, you know, the world, even non-Christians are begging for it. God, help us not to fail them. Help us to show them the truth so that they could also believe in the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ when they see the truth, when they, when they behold the chaste conversation of the women coupled with fear, let them also be drawn to the gospel of Jesus Christ as a result. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.